Plane. Is this what you expected? No. This is just the beginning. What's happening guys? I hope all's going well for you out there. I want to thank you as always for stopping by the channel today. Uh, we're continuing through the Die Hard movies. If you've missed my reviews of the first two Die Hard films, you can find them linked in the cards and on the end screen and in the description below to check out later. But today we're diving into Die Hard with a Vengeance. It's the third movie in the franchise. It's the one that I consider to be the last great Die Hard movie. So let's stop wasting time and let's get into this action-packed entry in the franchise franchise. Hey. John McLean, NYPD. Are you all right? Yes. Laundry day. After John McClane triumphantly saved his wife and hundreds of passengers in Die Hard 2, the franchise took a five-year break. Then, in May of 95, came Die Hard with a Vengeance. John McTiernan returned to direct after Rennie Harlan took his place in Part 2. The budget of the movie was increased to $90 million, and you would say it paid off, with the film bringing in more than $366 million globally. The story would also bring John McClane back to his hometown of New York for the first time. Samuel L. Jackson was added as Willis's co-star, the plot massively increased the size of the action playground, and I think this is a very polished action thriller that advances the character of John McClane nicely. It shows a lot of ambition in bringing up the overall spectacle. It doesn't have a reliance on the tropes of the prior two movies, and something I really love about this film was the on-location New York shoots. I think uh, McTiernan and DOP Peter Menzies utilized the cityscapes throughout this film to their advantage very well. It's just a very visually appealing, beautifully shot film. There's endless practical effects and a constant depth to all the backdrops of scenes. It does a great job of building the large-scale climactic tension that the plot relies on. I think Jeremy Irons comes in as the heavy and he does a great job of creating just an eccentric but still very entertaining bad guy. He has this heist planned and he uses a game of Simon Says to keep McLean and Samuel L. Jackson Zeus running all over town and distracted. It was kind of a unique plot that created a ton of appeal because it was hard to really assume where things would go next. I think this movie complements the interesting story with the, just a ton of car chases ripping throughout the city, practical explosions, loads of gunplay, fight sequences, and everything else really in between to truly capture that epic level adventure. The scavenger hunt that McLean and Zeus take all over the city is entertaining to watch. It really builds intrigue to see what the point of it all is going to be. It's very nicely layered and sure the story may be a little overzealous at times, but you can't always fault a movie for trying to keep the foot on the gas from start to finish because it's pretty much exactly what this movie does. You didn't see nobody! No! Nobody was following you! I'm telling you, he's jacking us around! The chemistry between Willis and Jackson was perfectly timed and crafted. You can find humor and sincerity in their budding friendship. They both do things vastly differently and with um, some tight writing, the odd couple subplot is a great addition to uh, just add levity and charm to already high levels of intensity. This is a very sleek action movie that keeps a fast pace and I think it delivers a little bit of everything. 
Something I also liked was that I felt McClane was closer to his persona in the first movie with less of a cartoonish presence than what he showcased in the second film. His frustrations for having to deal with all of these problems on a bad hangover just feels like classic McClane. This movie uh, was the subtle beginning of McClane's transition into grumpy old man and it worked. I think uh, Jackson brought a ton of charisma to the role with his textbook Samuel L. Jackson attitude and it complemented McClane's personality nicely. No, I ain't saying that McLean and Zeus on screen were exactly Riggs and Murtaugh, but they did make a great duo for this film. The uh, direction from McTiernan subtly captures that atmosphere of the first, but he nicely does a good job of uh, just elevating the suspense and the scope of the action to not make it feel like a retread. He had a great eye behind the camera. He captured some awesome action sequences that had a lot of variety to them. The uh, just explosion itself in the opening scene just sets the stage for what is to come. The stunt work and the chase sequences and the on-location shoots are just a great reminder of how old school movies used to be shot. in a bunch of green screens, just hundreds of extras, closed sections of the city, a lot of old school stunt work, and the action in this movie still looks fantastic. I can, yes, see some of the complaints about this script trying to do a little too much in the closing act. It does get a little busy with the plot turns, but for me, it's not really a hindrance, although personally, I do like the alternate ending as opposed to the theatrical cut. Some say McLean tracking Simon down months later and forcing him into a Russian roulette style game of McLean says uh, felt like a bit of a sinister step out of the mold of McLean who usually committed his violence and self-defense but I think I liked it I really liked it more I think it was just a fun turn of events for the constantly self-assured Simon who was so arrogant in this movie but for me I think the darker ending was this kind of a fitting closing to this film and the franchise but the theatrical version it's a complete action movie with a lot of great performances that creates some very charismatic characters. It does a great job of capturing the growth and the friendship between McLean and Zeus. It has a lot of effective humor that doesn't undercut the violence. So I got to give Die Hard with a Vengeance 90% on the meter. The practical stunt work on display in this one is really a product of its time. And despite all the years, this movie still holds up great. It's a charming adventure that uses New York City as the perfect sandbox for just wide sprawling action. The story is the definition of creative writing and seeing McLean with a partner for a change really added a great element to the film. Plus, it would be the last time in the franchise we get to see John McLean with hair showing that despite being a hero, John McLean is still susceptible to male pattern baldness and Die Hard with a Vengeance is still a fantastic movie. It's a very tightly crafted action film that really has stood the test of time with ease and it really marks the last of the great Die Hard movies. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. I'd love to talk movies with you guys. Share it with your friends. And without question, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can never miss a video. Here are some links to some recent reviews just in case you missed them. All my social media links and the link to our official website are down in the description below. And I'll catch you next time.